Hello friends and aspirants, welcome to this brand new series on staged functional programming in Spiral. I am your host, Ghostlike. In this video series, I will introduce you to a whole new way of programming that you never imagined could be possible before, with our target devices being FPGAs. We will be building a machine learning library on them, with the goal of creating superhuman reinforcement learning agents. You might be wondering, why FPGAs? Why not CPUs or GPUs? Aren't they better for doing ML? And the answer is no. GPUs are very hard to use for reinforcement learning. I mean, if you are like me, you probably heard about FPGAs, field programmable gate arrays before, but associated them only with hardware design work. But they do have high-level synthesis languages allowing them to be written in C++, and they do have notable advantages over CPUs and GPUs. To compare the three types of computational devices, CPUs are easy to program. You can do everything logically allowed on them owing to the heap-allocated abstractions such as functions and classes. You write mostly sequential programs on them, only occasionally using the extra cores on the processor die. GPUs, on the other hand, trade some of that ease of programming and flexibility for a truly massive number of processing cores. This makes them very good at executing vector operations and similar kinds of mathematical functions, but they are limited to very simple programs. GPUs derive their power from a host of restrictions imposed on them by their programming model. Sure, they do have a large number of threads executing in parallel, but imagine them being tied together like runners in a three-legged race. In their case, it is more like a 32-legged race. For that and similar reasons, you never see programs being written on the GPUs entirely, and applications tend to bounce data between the CPU and the GPU, leading to latency and performance issues. The FPGA programming model is fundamentally different from both. FPGAs can have the best of both worlds. They can execute the sequential code as the CPU can, as well as do large vector operations in parallel. On top of that, they have what is called pipeline parallelism, which starts the execution of the next batch of data as soon as the previous one is processed. The image on the screen explains it all. As you can imagine, this could be very powerful for doing machine learning work. Imagine, if instead of having a poker playing agent process the game one hand at a time, we could pipeline it a steady stream of hands, in other words data, without any of the sequential dependencies that come from executing the code on serial processing devices. In that case, maybe instead of being able to process tens of thousands of hands at most, it could be possible to go up to millions and even tens of millions of hands per second. And this performance advantage could be very important, because it might turn the current crop of poorly performing reinforcement learning algorithms into something that could be used to get a tangible advantage in the real world. The monetary incentives for mastering AI certainly are there. Top-ranked esports players make hundreds of thousands and even millions of dollars per year. You might ask, isn't this cheating? Maybe it is. But the point isn't to beat any game in particular, but to have the endeavor serve as a stepping stone to much greater things. I want to cause the technological singularity, and I cannot imagine this happening without conquering toy games like poker and having it be done with ease. I am obsessed with functional programming because it makes me better at it. And the point of programming isn't to dig yourself into a particular niche, but to be the best at everything. The purpose of AI is to cheat. Not on some toy game, but at life. In order to get closer to this lofty ideal, at this point I do not have any choice but to take a risk on FPGAs. GPUs will never be suitable for reinforcement learning, no matter how many cores they cram into them, and AI chips are vaporware. It is only by luck that I stumbled upon FPGAs, and I will try to grasp it and drive upon it in order to build something great, something you couldn't do in any other language. Join me on this journey. The goal of the journey is not to cheat game players, but the ML community itself. If it turns out that FPGAs aren't too onerous to program, what we will do is cheat the game of machine learning research itself. At the end of this, if we have enough power to do so, we will design a system that can infer its own learning algorithm. 
Should this be successful, we will reach a previously unseen high in programming skill and reinvent the way AI research should be done. Let's grasp it all. We can't get a better brain, but we can get better tools to help us on our journey through life.